Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody doing today? Hey, guys. Hey. hey. We've got Calvin Noel with us today. Calvin. What's up? What's up? Calvin's back. <laughs> <laughs> Good to have him. We're Good going to continue be. this conversation about content. And Calvin is the king of content. Oh, I don't know about that, but <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what we can talk about. I think he is. <laughs> So, guys, last time we talked uh, a lot about content. We talked about, um, you know, video blogs, content or SEO kind of stuff. How do you promote your agency effectively and how do you make it a priority? I mean, that's the big thing, right? Yeah. The What did you what was the example of the cobblers? Oh, cobblers kids have no shoes. Yeah. The shoemaker has kids have no shoes. Yeah. <laughs> I always say the the plumber has no water in the house. <laughs> Plumber's toilets clock. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so last week we talked about um, you know how to prioritize that, how to do it effectively, and um, this week I just want to keep opening that can of worms a little bit further and talk about you know what are some possibilities and how to do that really well. Um, and Calvin, I know you know in your experience, both as a contractor now as an agency owner, mm -hmm. um, you create a lot of really quality content. Uh huh. And how much of that would you say? is intentional obviously for the client but also how much of it do you do for yourself and or your agency to promote your agency yeah um well a lot of the content is definitely intentional for the client but for the agency i have to kind of make time you know so i have to kind of schedule time and say we have to create it because a lot of our business has come from content that we've made on social media um so I, I really believe in it. Like we had to do something this week and instead of doing a case study, we kind of created a visual video portfolio mm. of all the stuff that we kind of made, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I believe in it and I think it's definitely needed. And at first when we used to create content, you didn't know like, well, man, I don't think this got the engagement or maybe nobody commented, but then maybe you were out on the streets and, I was at a coffee shop and someone says, hey, I need to get with you on a few things. And they were I was like, what do you mean? It was like, well, you know, you're marketing and need some content. So I started to find out that people may not engage as far as like or comment, but they were getting the perception of what I do hmm. in the community. So yeah. it always works. That's great. That's yeah. great. Is there something specific that you like to focus on when you do that? Like create your portfolio? Is it? exclusively video or do you do all kinds of different formats or well i i kind of like video just because that's where everything is kind of going with the trends um yeah we do a lot of video but i like i said i like a good social media post i like creating a good social media channel where it has mm -hmm. like a feel and we did that with one of our clients where we were very intentional about what their palette on their social media looked like just because our thoughts were a lot of people don't go to websites anymore. They kind of go to your Instagram. And so we kind of built up their Instagram to feel like a brand. And um, so that way, if you're reaching out to people or asking people to be a part of your event or organization, they didn't have time to go to your website. They just kind of went to your Instagram and, and evaluated and said, oh, OK, yeah, I can. I would love to be a part of what you're doing. Yeah. So I take a lot of intentionality in that as well. That's good. Mm. That's when good. it comes to content for your agency, um, how do you, what's your personality? Like talk a little bit about that. Like, cause I feel like one of the challenges with content strategy, you talked a little bit about this last time. And I think most of this episode, we'd love to dig into your philosophy on it for, mm -hmm. for how you guys approach it. Mm -hmm. Maybe both for your clients, but even more so for yourself. But I feel like a lot of challenges with content strategy for agencies is that they tend to fall into just doing what everyone else does. Right. So they make a lot of content. But in my opinion, um, it's hard when, you know, if you don't find the heart of like your different take or how you talk or mm -hmm. um, your your philosophy on something, you can actually become. It can just feel like everybody else's stuff and just be noise. So yeah. what's, what's yours? Well, I, I kind of I'm kind of used to living out loud, you know, as far as personally. Um, and even when we named our agency, Come On Creative, at first I was thinking, well, I'm going to go with a different name that kind of fits the other ad agencies and trying to be, 
you know, super pro. And it was just like, dude, that's not who I am. You know, I come love, on. Yeah, I love saying come <laughs> on. So come there on. it is. I just started to be like, well, this is who we are. You could take it or leave it. And I think just trying to be true to who we are um, creates a perception and people can like it or, or not mm-hmm. like it as well. You know, you know, talking about content strategy, I mean, do you find that you, when you guys strat- talk about the strategy of the content you're building for yourself or a client, do you go through and go, okay, this is a long-term play. We're going to look at six months of content. We're going to build stories that create a, a bigger narrative. Or do you find that people don't adhere to these long-term narratives and content? They adhere to smaller bite size, cool, you know, like stuff that's cool that gets their attention. And, and when you start designing content, what's the mindset that you think you're, you're the customer or the viewer is going to be in when they look at your stuff. Like, what do you, how do you design your stuff? What's the strategy? Yeah. I, I try to just, I don't really have a set way. I just kind of say, this is what I'm kind of thinking. This is what I'm kind of feeling. The best, the best thing I can say is with content, I don't overthink it. Yeah. And I think that's where a lot of agencies do. I think they just kind of overthink it. I'm like, you have to explore and try things and so i just believe in you know try it try a creative way to just say we worked on these projects this week oh or or, you know it's halloween and we wanted to take halloween photos Mm -hmm. but instead we just hired a photographer to take our photos for halloween in our costumes and it just gives a step it gives a look better than you just using your iphone you kind of lit it and all those were, were photos or you know we just decided like i said Let's just try and make a portfolio in a, you know, 60 second video, you mm-hmm. know, stuff like that. Like we have to just set aside time, but we don't really overthink it. And I think that's the biggest hindrance before is because we used to overthink it. Like, why well, do I want to do this? And I don't want to do this. And I'm like, this is 2020. This is social media. <laughs> Just get it out there. Yeah. You know, so you carry V that type of thing. You think just getting stuff out, getting it free, more frequent, uh, touches is is better than um than putting too much energy into something that you never get out and never make perfect so yeah i I just think you can't overthink it you know i think you just have to you know put it out there and keep it within whatever your brand is if you have a certain approach but i think a lot of times we're looking for perfection and with social media it just never happens because with your agency you've got so much work to do that i just think you can't yeah overthink it how do you uh take content and and utilize the same content on all these different platforms so you save your time you know like we talked about that Mm -hmm. on the last episode of how to repurpose content Mm -hmm. and get a lot of legs out of it is there any strategy that you guys put together that that you do that like when you shoot video are you thinking like okay we're going to use this section for that platform or this section for a post or this section for whatever blog yeah um we've kind of started doing like with our video shoots um kind of either hiring or just being intentional of somebody with an extra camera to record behind the scenes mm. of the work that we're doing. Like that's their job is not to do the video shoot. Yeah. Their job is just to record behind the scenes. Or we may say, Hey, when, when you're doing behind the scenes, just make sure you always do it a uh, horizontal so that we can maybe use it on for some social content. And I think sometimes people love to see, behind the scenes of how things are working um so we kind of go into it that way Mm. all around video stuff but and i think that's an awesome thing because i think there's a lot when i see those production videos of people shooting something they're producing it just it starts to come alive like and it starts to look you start to look at the work like this is this takes a lot of work to get something good Mm -hmm. and sometimes the behind the scenes for me are more interesting than the actual final product Right. Um, and especially totally. if you're looking, you know, for uh, if clients are looking at that or potential clients, they can see, oh, man, these guys are pro like they're they're doing it. They're doing it right. And uh, you can, you know, see the magic behind the, the Yeah. Program. And I think, like I said earlier, like I, I've, I've went to places and met people and they're like, hey, Calvin, how you doing? I was like, man, I'm doing good. They're like, man, you are all over the place. Like you are so busy. <laughs> what are you doing? Like, I see you're everywhere. And I'm like. Okay, first of all, you haven't liked anything, you hadn't commented, but you're saying that I'm super busy. And so a lot of times, like if I was filming a lot, I would just put maybe today's office is San Antonio or today's office is 
New York or, you know, just, yeah. just little stuff that I was just throwing out there. Potential clients like to see that, that you're all over the place mm-hmm. and tell you they hire you. Then they only, they want to be the only client you ever hear about. <laughs> exactly. I think that's a great point. Um, I know a lot of different um, <clears throat> marketers talk about this, but you know, when you think about creating content for yourself or your agency or to promote what you get services that you do, <clears throat> it's, it's real, it's real easy to fall into the same kind of mindset that you do for your clients, meaning, mm-hmm. all right, we got to plan this out. All right, we got to like write it out. We got to script it. We got to schedule a day. Rather, maybe sometimes what's most effective is to switch the mindset into documentation mm-hmm. instead of creation. Yeah. And so like as an agency, as yourself, it's not about always creating something. It's about documenting what you're doing. And totally. I think that's what you said, Brad. It's what you yeah. said, Calvin. Mm-hmm. If you just like take some iPhone shots of the photo shoot you're doing for a client mm-hmm. or your development team working hard to get a website done mm-hmm. or a video of, of whatever you may do. It's more of a documentation of right. your day. Like you said, people go, oh, man, you're really busy. And all you've really done is maybe documented a few pieces of what you do in a normal day. Right. And um, to me, that sounds a lot more accessible and easier to do because when you see, um, you know, behind the scenes at a, at a video shoot that you're doing for a client or mm-hmm. that takes all of about three seconds to shoot. Yeah. And then just put it up and just say, hey, here's what we did today. And we're excited about it. Yeah. That's a great promo piece. And it's yeah. simple and easy. And yeah. it took you a minute to to create it, to post it. And yeah. Send it and out. it's. And as far as promotion, it's so much easier to uh, show instead of tell. So, like, Mm -hmm. I mean, you could do a case study and, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, spend a lot of time putting that together. But sometimes just showing what you do is just uh, is enough. Yeah. And I also, too, just try to practice what I preach. Mm -hmm. So if I tell clients that the importance of it and I see that they're not listening yet, I'm kind of the guy that's like, look, I'll show you better than I can tell you. Yeah. This is this works and you need to create it. I create it for myself. I believe in it so that people really believe me yeah. when, I, when I advise them. Well, give me give me a couple of fun tips or fun things that you've done for clients that maybe have uh, surprised even surprised you when you did something for uh, a client or yourself, your own company with uh, social media or some type of a video or content that you're like, wow, I got it. We got a response. That I just never I never thought. Do you have any good examples or any tips that you can give us in the audience to? Um, Sorry to put you on the spot. Well, yeah, that's a little on the spot, but I think we can work through it. Um, I guess just one of my clients, like I said, um, they were trying to reach a global audience as far as an event. And so they were used to be around back in the day but then they're coming back in 2020 so they've been gone for like 10 15 years they're returning and my whole thought was it just needs to be kind of fresh and it just needs to be like hey we're not what we used to be but we're better than but we're going somewhere you know positive Mm. and so i think what we were really trying to do was with their color palette with their social, like I said, we really wanted it to be that if we DM'd somebody on Instagram to say, hey, would you be a part of our podcast? They're just going to look at their Instagram channel and make their decision. Yeah. Most people don't go to your website to see, oh, this is really pro. They'll kind of say, oh, this these people really do podcasting. <laughs> yeah. So I would try to up, you know, up the... uh up the design and make it, you know, appealing because that was the thing that they referenced. So we kind of did that for a few months and then we just started reaching out to people to say, Hey, would you go live with us on Instagram? And I think people started to say like, okay, this is not that bad. And then once we started getting bigger names and stuff like that, then it just kind of snowballed to, Hey, we're ready for the big dogs. You know what I mean? Yeah. So kind of, kind of just intentionally, I like on social media, especially Instagram, um, but we also did that with Facebook too. Yeah. You've, uh, I always have these little quotes that you say, Calvin, one of the things that you've always said is uh, perception determines reception. Yeah. And that's one of your, your quotes. And so, I mean, that's a good thing is that people make judgments on first sight. Like we do that as humans, right? We, we meet somebody and all of a sudden 
first time we meet him, walk away, we've already made a judgment of who they are, their personality, if you like them or not, yeah, kind of thing. So um, same thing, right, with the content that we create, um, it can, and people just don't have the time. So yeah, you're not right. I'm assuming that you design content for quick, a quick response versus something that people are going to take a long time and you know knowing that people just don't research and they don't get too deep they just get see what they see yeah and they i, I think i think it's forgiving on social media i think mm-hmm. it's just like it's like gary v i mean he's not overthinking anything yeah. it's not like oh man i didn't like the way he did that ad or i did that post you're like he's just coming with you daily with stuff that's just Hmm. around his topic that he loves to talk about and you believe him and you and you look at him as a thought leader versus someone that's just trying to be so super pro you know i mean you don't really have that much time because if you're putting that much time into it then you probably don't have time for your clients yeah right yeah you know so yeah yeah there, there's that balance of what you guys are talking about of authenticity and being real and then being presenting yourself in a way that would attract the right clients to you. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's like that dance of like being true to yourself. This is who we are. This is the dirty, the good, bad, and the ugly, but at the same time, making sure you curate the right amount of that. Yeah. Now, Calvin, in your world, um, for what you do, where do you get the inspiration for the different pieces of content that you create? Like what, are there certain categories? Um, well, I'm I'm competitive, so I I follow a lot of organizations that I like, and or other agencies or whatever or other businesses, and I just kind of say, I'm gonna do what they do, but I'm gonna try to do it better, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and so I'm like, oh, they did it this way. Well, we're gonna do it this way, you know. So I kind of do it that way, and then also too, I use my personal brand a lot more. Um, just because I had a bigger following than the agency. And so I use my personal brand and I'm just like, it is what it is. Right. And I think that's like what I'm, what I'm it's getting at. Quote. Right. Cause like <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> um, but you know, the execution you want to do better, but like the kind of nugget, the heart, the actual piece of information that you're communicating or the personality or something like that, that has to, that comes from something unique to you, right? That's not something you're looking at somebody else and being like, oh, let's, let's no, be it's, like them. No, it's just, it's just being who I am. You know, I, I will say, you know, Gary Vee has been a very big influence for me. It's just kind of like quit overthinking it. Just be who you are. And I just was thinking to myself, I was like, well, I have a personality. So in some people love it, some people may not, but it is what it is. And you could take it or leave it. And if yeah. you leave it, I probably don't want to work with you anyway. So (laughs) Mm -hmm. I'm just going to create. I mean, I just love creating for the sake of creating. You know, I'm like, we got to do more. We got to do more or I have to do more. And so I have to kind of schedule creative uh, initiatives for me and my company because I just haven't had the time. But like if I look at my phone or if I look at my hard drive, I got like tons, tons of stuff. Mm. (laughs) that I could use to showcase things, you know, mm-hmm. that's awesome. Uh, this question is for all of the, all of us here at the table is, um, w- who do you think does it really, really well as far as promoting their own agency? Uh, and that can be local, regional, national, international. Who, who's your, who would you say these guys or these girls or whoever promote their agency, their practice, their services really, really well? In, in the sense of if I was a client, mm. I could see how I would want to use them. Yeah, I would say uh, from an a, a, a international standpoint, I, I follow a lot of Chai Day mm. uh, and different offices in diff- around the country. So not just their main office like in um, Brad, thank Los- you for teaching me how to say it finally. Chai, chai Day. Um, out of their Santa Monica, or I think they're in Santa Monica, their office, but other offices around the world. And then um, locally, I would say that um, Red Pepper in uh, Nashville does a pretty good job. Mm-hmm. They do these uh, segments uh, every week and, and um, they, they do a decent job. I think it's hard for an agency. Um, again, I think the best thing for an agency to do as far as social is my in my pers- personal view is to show behind the scenes of what's going on. 
Um, that is probably the easiest, even though we don't do it well. It's probably the easiest versus making up things that people um, or clients, potential clients would want to do and showcasing, you know, just what you do, but do it in a fun way, in a, in a unique way, maybe. Um, what about you guys? Um, I would say for me, like, I don't, uh, I would say Red Pepper does a good job in town as far as an agency is concerned. Uh, they, I know for sure they do. And maybe we can kind of get them on the show to talk about it. But <clears throat> as far as brands are concerned, I tend to like, um, I, I follow some agencies, but I follow a lot of just businesses. And I tend to like businesses where their, um, where their marketing is really something you'd want to watch. Yeah. Right. So um, ads that are designed like the Harmon Brothers style or whatever that genuinely you want to watch that that's the type of stuff that I think is is a great mix when your content can be your marketing and people want your content. It delivers value in and of itself. And then it also by nature of it kind of markets your brand. Um, I think uh, a sort of someone who's in a hybrid space that I really like is uh, a brand called Smart Marketer. And um, they're sort of like educational um they also own a few businesses that they use to to transparently show how business works which is kind of cool and interesting yeah um so i tend to kind of I, I like that kind of thing and we you know at medicaid uh, take a bit of that type of style here and so a big part of like who, what our content is is teaching and um you know every once in a while we try and be a little funny uh, and sometimes people laugh and Sometimes people shake their head. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, my, right when I'm done with this, I got to start work on a script for a video shoot that we're doing here later. Oh, that's fun. And uh, and so if you got any creative juices or yeah. funny stuff that you want to give me? Then... You know what I think uh, uh, that I'm hearing from me, both Calvin and you, Ken, is that you have to use your own personality uh, to and who you are and yeah. create content around that. So I yeah, had not... someone tell me once that... Um, the the best way to to make your agency stand out and specifically this person was talking about an agency like marketing agency or something like this like not just any business but i would say this applies to any business is to have a founder or or um or someone who's the core of the brand that has a really strong opinion and take on how they do things and they mm. talk about that mm. and i don't I, I think that's something you can't conjure up i think if you do you end up trying to be a Gary B V lookalike or something yeah, like totally. that. I don't think you want to do that, but you gotta, we talked about this last time. I believe you have to find your unique take in your passion and, and your personality and really figure out, okay, how can I, how can I um, feel led and, and passionate about talking about something mm -hmm. and then start doing that. Mm -hmm. um, I think if you don't have that and you just try and do what other people are doing, then that's when you get a bunch of lookalikes. And I would say that's probably, 80% of what you see out there, not because every 80% of businesses are bad, but just because to, f to be intentional about finding that personality and then brave enough to bring it out and like, yeah. you know, put stuff out there. Um, I feel like there's not enough people don't place a lot of weight on it, right. a lot of focus on doing it. so I feel like it doesn't happen very often. Yeah. Well, and man, I, I could be wrong. And I think from a, from a perfect example of what you're saying, Ken, is what I just heard all three of you just say was representative of your own personalities of when I asked what what agency or content was important to you, you both reflected back to me what I see in your own personality. So you said, um, Brad, you said Chiat Day and you were talking about professional, um, creative um, content. It was more like this is the highest agency, uh, a high level agency been around forever and they put forth, you know, real high level I love to watch their expertise and their content. And that, to me, that reflects your personality and you know how you run your agency and what's important to you. Um, and for Ken, you said immediately entertainment. Be careful here. You said entertainment. <laughs> it was like, and creativity. And you know, you come across as Mr. Serious Business Guy on the podcast sometimes, but I know that you, you know, you were a performer and you sing and you have that creativity inside of you. So you mingle those two together in your personality, right? I, on that point, and we, and, and I think I would encourage anyone to do this, my own story, and I, we won't go into it, but I think the world wants you to put different things in a box. Right. And that was a real struggle for me. So real right, I had a creative side um, that was attached to a lot of things, including music that, that 
And then I had this other side of me that was business oriented and technical and that kind of stuff. And for the longest time you, well, it's, it's just what happens. You get put in a box and, um, you become more like everybody else that's in that box. Yeah. I think the, the, and it's happening a lot more now, but I encourage everyone to figure out what are the weird things that someone be like, really, you do that and that, like how in the world <laughs> is that possible? And bring those together to make a true unique kind of take on something because it's unique to your personality, which your personality is unique, right? Um, and, and I think for agencies, I feel like they often get, like feel like they need to be in a box. Like I'm a marketing agency and I got to look like this and my website has to look like this. Again, I think there are standards that you want to follow because it helps people attach to things. But at the same time, um, I've noticed, oh, I've, I've experienced that melding things that different worlds that people would think are just completely like how, like, you know, it doesn't work. It doesn't make sense. Bring that together actually and exploring that and then figuring out what that means mm -hmm. um, i think there's a lot of value there and that's where i think you become like truly unique and genuine that's great um and i'm again i'm not saying that that's what i am but that's that's been my experience and yeah. i think i see that in other people and it's like okay um you know you I'm, I'm guessing when they were starting out you know anyone that you might look up to like people would probably be like you're kind of weird because you do this and this and you can't do that and that <laughs> you're not allowed to do that and that you're only allowed to do one thing you have to choose and yeah. uh the truth is you don't right? Um, right calvin you you responded uh you didn't respond but you referenced gary v a few times and i know that that's a very personality driven mm -hmm. um authentic brand and that's what you are and that's what you've said it's like i want to be me i don't care what people think yeah well i think there's you know i like gary v but i mean it's a balance you know but there's other agencies from like, too much gary v is too much gary v yeah but yeah. i mean I, but it, it's to never me, too much gary v to Come me on. gary is like my marketing pastor <laughs> he kind of tells good. me like this is what you need to be thinking this is how you need to think but then i'll follow like wyden and kennedy I'll follow other agencies. I follow actually a lot of agencies. And some of the things that I've seen is there, it may not be that the quality of their work, but it's their culture. Mm. And you're just like, oh, they seem like they have a good time. They seem like they're fun to work with. They love each other. Mm. And it may make you say, I may want to work with them because they seem cool. I'm seeing either younger faces or I'm seeing that they have a good time. Or like I said, their Halloween photos where they went all out for Halloween in their costumes, <clears throat> you know, stuff like that really um, speaks volumes to just giving people an inside look into their culture. And then I just kind of, I, you know, what I feel like right now with COVID and everything that's happening, I just feel like the playing field is leveled and everybody needs content. Everybody needs digital marketing. Everybody needs something online. <clears throat> and the thing that I realized is that the playing field is so level that I have the same access that Ellen has or Oprah or Wendy Williams show. They're all on their iPhone recording their shows. And so for me at the beginning of COVID, I kind of went into it like, uh oh, guys, this is our opportunity because we normally can't afford the big TV productions and all that stuff. And so all of Hollywood, all of production land is like we can't really do all that right now with COVID. Mm. we have to go to something a little more simpler with our phones and with, with zooms and all that stuff and so i kind of went into it like here's an opportunity here's an opportunity for us to do virtual conferences us to do different things and create certain content to create that perception because now they can compare ours together so whoever has the best personality kind of wins versus it being, you know, I've spent thousands of dollars with lights and video and cameras. So I, 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 I kind of like, you know, I'm very intentional right now of like, this is the time. Like Oprah said yesterday, she said, Hey guys, I just want to let you know, Oprah magazine, we're not going to do any more print magazines. We're just going to go next year, all digital. I'm only going to do four magazines the whole year print. Mm -hmm. And she said, but this is what got me. And I knew what she was saying. She's like, but we got a lot of digital stuff that we just want to do. It's going to be digital. And she, she, you could tell somebody put her up to it, but she's basically saying digital, 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 digital. <laughs> and I'm like, that's what we do. We should have 
see, now she's selling you digital and now everybody's like, well, let's run the digital. But I think agencies should be leading the way and showing people like, yeah, we've been saying digital for years. And I think when people get into a bind, they know how to reach out to you. They're like, oh, yes, because you you preach what you practice, what you preach. You mm-hmm. know, so. Yeah, that's great. That's an excellent point. And I think I think the world is changing dramatically. Um, and I think for those people who can um, adapt and those of us at the table have been living in the digital world for years, but we forget that so for so many people, this is brand new mm-hmm. and so there's a huge opportunity. Let's shift a little bit and talk about um, repurposing content. We touched on that at the beginning of the, of the podcast. I know, yeah. Ken, you guys do that quite a bit. Um, I think there's there's a real value as people listen to this and they're thinking, oh, man, I just can't schedule more time in my day. I'm slammed. I'm working 60 hours a week on client work already. How do, how in the world am I going to promote myself? Well, one of those is certainly documenting, like we said, mm-hmm. but another one is re- repurposing content and taking, you know, making one video a month saying block out a couple hours, knock it out, and then maybe taking the transcript of that, turning it into a blog, cutting that video up for different platforms, you know, uh, using the audio to release as a podcast or something like that. Ken, do you want to talk yeah. a little bit about that? And I've, I honestly like, and I've watched you do things like that for years. Um, so you, you kind of have that, that mind too. Maybe we could do, I think we were going to do a whole episode on just the nuts and bolts of how we do some of that stuff, but just kind of high level. Um, look, whether you're an agency you're in an agency or you're in another business, right? You need to leverage your time really, really effectively. And so um, what we what we found is, is really figuring out what we're gonna talk about the topics. And we like plan out the year as far as like the strategy of topics that, are, that, um, that we think uh, we wanna educate people around or we wanna talk about because we're, we're, we wanna uh, bring in service through that, that type of topic or it's important to our audience, whatever. Um, and so we figure what, out what those are and then, um, everything really comes from that. So like, we'll actually just create an outline around that topic. We have a certain formula that we look at and from that outline, um, we, we do a discussion and we record that and it's sort of like a podcast that thing actually never gets released. We might release that at some point, but it's really to flesh that out and really get people's input, but it's a fast way. It was, that's to me, that is the secret is once you create a little outline around a topic and then you sit down with one or two people and you record it that really can kind of like work it out and ask questions and like really massage it and kind of flesh that thing out. Um, And you're following an outline, right? So you're not just all over the place. Um, But from there that becomes certain written content that becomes uh, that written content, you know, becomes newsletters, like certain pieces of that. We have a whole list of assets that we would create with uh, with every single article that we that we post. So, like, we might have a video, we might have a download, we might have a, a paid a paid thing, we might have a whole different set of things for each for each article, um, and that comes out of that topic. Sometimes a series of content comes out mm-hmm. of the topic. Like, we just we're in the middle of recording what we're calling a conquering crisis series, and it was this idea of like, hey, um, you know, in a downturn it's kind of scary, but are there opportunities and how do we find those? And so we're actually, we actually have, you know, several, several, uh, iterations of that. And yeah. And and it goes on, like when we create, we record videos from certain pieces of these topics. And then from those videos, we chop them up and do social posts in the videos. We have hooks that are little funny things that sometimes we use just for, for ads. Um, and I think that's important yeah, that goes you th- on, on. That as you think through, um, I know one of the things you guys do really well is you, you bring in that creative funny, maybe at the front, at the front of the video, and then you get into the meat of it. And then what you have there is a l- content that you can use. So lately I know you, you've been posting things, um, getting ready to post them on TikTok, and you're like, okay, do we want to put, you know, the meat of it on there? Or do we want to take the funny part? And have, that option. Say, and have that option to say, yeah, I'm going to take the outtakes, the, you know, the spoofs or whatever didn't didn't make it or just the funny, the funniest pieces of that video and then just throw it out there and pe- create some curiosity to say, who is these guys as an agency that's creating kind of uh, I know one of them, you're, you were, you had like a full on 
dressed up like a Texan with a cigar and <laughs> making fun of, you know, bad design. <laughs> so right. His name is Dallas, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> My neighbor's name name is Dallas and I call him Dallas, Texas. <laughs> But, um, yeah, I mean, I would say for anyone listening to this, like find, I think finding what your top, like your edge, your personality, that the, the thing that burns inside of you, what that thing is that you love to talk about, um, and then refine that because, um, that's, that's the most important thing I think. And then from there, um, I, I would just, I think, I think people, I think Agencies have a lot of content people on their team, but they're all doing client work usually. And um, some of the some of the some of the ones that I, I've I've seen move in, in really good ways are where they kind of take and they give like dedicated resources to their own stuff. And it doesn't even I mean, you do need to spend some money, by the way, but it's not it's still you can start small. But I mean, we have a small video team just for our own stuff. We've got we've got people we don't even. For, okay, so for example, like we just a year and a half ago said, okay, we want to re- get really good at video and uh, <laughs> it's debatable whether we're really good at video, but like we're going to start down this path and we're just going to start doing, you know, and so, um, and so we started to build that team and, uh, and just figure it out. Right. Um, and now that we've been doing, doing that, that part of our content for about a year and a half now. We actually have people reaching out to us asking us for do, to do that for, to th- for them, and we don't even sell that service because mm. mm. um, we don't we don't do a lot of video in house for clients. Um, sometimes we'll do little things like talking head and stuff like that, but as far as like video ads and that kind of stuff, you know, we'd normally go to a video ad company for that. Anyway, that yeah. that's an example of how it can actually benefit you in ways that you didn't even expect, right? Because you get competent at something, doing it for yourself which I do think is an important skill as an agency. A lot of times you can get um, stuck in doing only for clients. And when you don't do it for yourself, you, you can't be risky, mm. you know? And if you can't ever be risky, you can't innovate. And if you can't innovate, it's really hard to be really good for clients. And so it's a kind of a catch point too. And so anyway. Yeah, you need to cut maybe cut your teeth on your own stuff. I, I think that- so, Is that what you're saying? I think that if you can be really good at, if you can have your own stuff to to play around with, yeah. you know, um, you can explore it's huge and whether it's content, by the way, or, you know, yeah. anything else that you do. You know, I worked with you, Calvin, for uh, mm-hmm. for a l- time. And um, I think, you know, you've taught me a lot of just getting stuff done and out and not trying to be too much of a perfectionist or make it perfect, you know, um, not to put too much thought into things, put go with your gut and 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 get it done quickly and because tomorrow's another day and it's going to be another post right so it's going to come and go and social media is just very um short term as far as the communication it's not as you know well i think you just got to stay competitive i mean like i said earlier the landscape is changing so churches are doing great content churches i've seen churches do better content than agencies and what happens is the more they keep doing great content then you ask the person to set the church to say, Hey, would you help us with some content? And they, they, they got, they wind up replacing what you do. I think one of the things that I've learned is you have to make your agency a client. And so Mm -hmm. we try to make our agency a client, you know, where we have to schedule time to, to be very intentional about doing it and just getting things out there. Um, and haven't been the best at doing that, but it takes a lot of intentionality. And so, I think it's just, yeah, you just can't overthink it and you just got to get it out there. And uh, this is why I love what Gary Vee says. Like, this is the Internet. You can we got the Internet like you can make the Internet do whatever you want it, it to do. It you, made my coffee this morning. Yeah. I mean, you can order it. You can do. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, there's a lot that you can do with hey, it. Google. And, I, and I think the other thing is one of the things that I've told our clients is um, you have to start thinking yourself as a media company in 2021 and 2020 you can't just be a nonprofit or an artist or just a business you have to start thinking about being a media company and that means content like one client i kind of drilled at home this client deals with men uh trying to reach men spiritually you know around the world and i just said listen if you become a media company and you start releasing content 
to help better the man. And then you start repurposing all content about men in a year's time. You might become the new BuzzFeed for men so that when people are releasing content like authors, they're calling you saying, hey, can I get on your platform to be able to promote my new book? You know, yeah. but if you make your company a more of a media company, you'll get that kind of exposure mm. in the future. That's yeah. good. That's a great that's a great point. Do you guys have any like <clears throat> set aside budget that's in your line items for the year? That's your own content promoting yes. your own agency. Uh, pre, and, and is that helpful? Pre COVID, yeah, so. um, we did. I think post COVID, we'll <laughs> see Everything how. Went wherever. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. But it's like uh, content or rent. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, thank goodness we've. Just kidding. We fared okay through this, but um, yeah, I think just rethinking like what, how much energy, and, and again, making sure that you can. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's a good question. I don't know. I mean, I. I would say how I mean, much of your total marketing agency marketing budget or whatever would go to content. Um, I think at least half of it. And I, the reason I say that is whatever your marketing budget is um, or whatever you spend making something, I kind of think at least you have to spend that marketing it. Yeah. Um, and so, and I think for us it's about, it's about that. So we spend about um, anywhere from 10 to 20% of revenue on, on marketing and, uh, and content creation, I would say. Oh. And, um, I, I advise, by the way, uh, there are some benchmarks like for, for businesses that we work with, we actually advise they spend in the e-commerce world, you spend anywhere from 30 to 55% of revenue on just ads, not even, not even the creation of it. Um, if that's just part of the model, um, and, and, it, and it works if you've got it dialed in. So anyway, we practice what we preach a little bit and we're actually <coughs> underneath most of our clients as far as as far as our spend on that kind of stuff. But that makes sense. We have efficiencies and those kind of things. Mm -hmm. But we definitely um, have intention. Like there are three dedicated team members to just content. They're not all full time, um, but but they uh, they just do content and um, our marketing. And by say, what I say that when I say that it's like either writing, producing, editing, mm. those kind of things. I do think also that the soul has to come from somebody who knows who cares and know, and know, and knows has a passion about it. And so like often that has to be one of like the leaders or founders, I would say, I think, I don't know, you guys tell me like if you see otherwise, but it's hard. I find to get genuine um, content and personality from, from someone that's not that. Um, you know, you, if you hire somebody who is really good at like maybe the strategy and, and posting right. and, and kind of producing may not be the face. Right. And cause I think that it's gotta be genuine. I think that you can even feel whether it's genuine from, from the outside, even if you're trying, you know, but yeah, no, that's that we, we dedicate that. That's our, that's approximately our numbers on it. The yeah. other thing I was going to say content, like I know we lean heavy in this world with video, but it doesn't mean that it's video. It's just right. It's blogs. It's 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 photos. I mean, it's it's little things that you can do. I mean, there's so many apps. Like one of the things is I know people just don't have time to even research what's out there. I research the app store. Mm. I'll take something from an app and say, "Ooh, that's I like the way that animated." Mm -hmm. But what I'll do is take one of our professional photos and it and put it in there. Now it looks like people think that we've created it, <laughs> you know, and maybe mm -hmm. other agencies may know that we didn't, but the client may know the client may not know. And they're just, once again, it's just a perception. I like, mean, if it looks good, it looks if it good. looks good. It looks good. It is what it is, you know? So yeah, it doesn't even matter. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah. Um, I was going to say this, like on the, on the content stuff, you mentioned video is not the only type of content. I think that's important, right? So written written content's a big part of it, and that's something that we uh, I had said like in our in our world, like we actually start with the written content, mm. and so you know I think that's actually more important than I would even say like the the what you do, right? Like as far as like what it ends up at is very different than. Um, it's not the same as like this, the thing that you're actually trying to communicate, which is the topic. Yeah. And so that's why I think you have to figure that out before you do a video or before you do a blog post. Or totally. Before, and honestly, it becomes, 
it can become different things, right? Like, you know, some concepts are great as video. Some concepts are better at, as books right. that you might sell or something yeah. like that. Or articles or whatever. Um, yeah. Well, well, thanks, guys, for the discussion. Yeah, this Thanks, is Calvin, awesome. for joining us today. How can yeah. people find you uh, out there, Calvin? Yeah, uh, personally, I'm at Calvin Noel and my agency's at Come On Creative, C-M-O-N Creative. And... Um, yeah, hope to see you guys again sometime. Yeah, soon. thanks for uh, joining us today. It's uh, always always a pleasure to have you on the on the podcast, and we look forward to um, some time in the future having you again. Absolutely, Absolutely. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Cool. Okay, until next time, guys. Bye bye.